thanks everyone for joining this afternoon's webinar on just logins uh, webinar on working from home how do you manage your remote staff on the work from home situation in this COVID-19 situation so as you all should know by now the world is pretty much closed right you can't go everywhere to meet your friends anymore you can't travel to places all my even my hotel my travel plans has been cancelled over the last two uh, last two months so I think because of that, and everyone's kind of forced to work from home. So we have all these challenges, how to deal with this COVID-19 situation, how to do work from home, how to telecommunicate. We have been, uh, I'd like to kind of share some ideas with everybody. So despite the setbacks from this um, situation, I think the show must go on. You all have your businesses to run. So do we, we have to keep servicing our existing customers. We have to make sure that our systems are up and running. So. The show must essentially go on, but how do you do that with all workforce all working from home? Now, if y'all do not know by now, MOM has just, uh, it's, it's kind of, every time they, they, they say they will do it, they usually will do it. So they will start implementing regulations to make sure that companies allow employees to work from home. So I think unfortunately, even if you do, want, do not want to, if your employees still want to work, Unfortunately, you have to think about how to make this arrangement work for your company. So, in summary, how do you manage a, work, a remote workforce during this COVID-19 situation? So today, let me just give you a little background myself. Uh, my name is uh, Chan Chao Hao. I'm actually COO of Just Login. Um, I myself has about 20 years of remote working experience, uh, both we just log in and as well with previous other companies that I work for. And 30% of just login's team has already been working from home or remote for since before COVID-19. In fact, they've been working from home for a couple of years already because we actually have a remote team in the Philippines, we have a remote team in Malaysia. So we have this experience before COVID-19 on how to work from home, how to make this work for everybody. On top of that, we also implement work from home arrangements for all our employees at least once a month. So employees uh, can request to have a work from home arrangement once a month to deal with things at home, maybe an aircon leakage or maybe a service repair. So these are already in place. So we already have this uh, set up ready and just log in to manage all these work from home arrangements. And to make things a little bit more complicated, I think everyone here will know I have, a I have a young child as well. So I'm also a father of a young child. There are a lot of challenges about working from home, I think you all should know. So I think before, uh, I mean, it would be easier if you don't have kids running around at home, definitely. But I mean, we, make, we try to make the best, especially nowadays, kids with this COVID-19, some of them are actually working, studying at home as well. So you have these challenges, how to deal with it. So one of the key challenges based on our general understanding of work from home is that there's a lot of distractions at home. Okay, home environments might not be suitably set up for work from home arrangements. I mean, uh, you should know that, right? You usually have a very designer set up. You don't have a desk properly set up. So it's going to be quite a challenge if it's suddenly you're asked to work from home. There's a lot of distraction. You have your kids, your wife. If you're staying with your in-laws, you're staying with your parents. You even have other challenges from them. The other thing to look consider is that when you don't work, when you do work from home, when you do a lot of telecommuting, you will have a lot of faith, you will lose out on a lot of face-to-face -face meetings. So, and it's not a very natural thing for a lot of people. A lot of people um, tends to want to have a face-to-face -face meeting, right? Um, if if it's not possible, they try to get as I mean a video conferencing meeting. So, without all these face-to-face -face meeting. I hear this a lot from my sales team. It's like, oh, without a face-to-face -face meeting, I won't be able to close this deal. Without a good handshake, I won't be able to close this deal. But unfortunately, in this kind of scenario, you can't do much. Everyone, customers don't even want to see you. And one of the things that employers really cannot uh, worry about is that you have no visibility of workforce. Where, where are your workforce at what point in time? Where are they? Are they actually working? Or are they abusing the work from home situation? So all these are things that you have to think about. Now, how do you deal with all these challenges? Now, let's start with things at home that's probably a little bit easy to deal with. Uh, this might be quite a familiar setup if you have three kids, right? Working from home, they're jumping all over you, if not jumping on you. 
right? Or they climb over you. I got my daughter once, you know, attending meetings and she'll climb all over me as I was talking to a customer. This is quite a challenging time, especially with young children at home. I think this is a very familiar picture a couple of weeks back. Uh, I think there was a BBC presenter where the kid ran in, in the, during an interview. So you can Google this uh, BBC interview and you will find that there was a very comical setup there. So I think one of the key things about working with children at home is that you probably need to find a way to arrange with your spouse to look after the children, right? That's one possibility. If you have other family members at home, you probably can put them here. You know, let's take turns. Everybody take turns one hour uh, session, uh, one hour a day. You know, you split it over two or three days. You can actually try to see if the best to look after the kid while you put some deep, uh, put some work on it. Other things, uh, other things to look at. Of course, you can occupy them with TV, but the other challenges give them some hobbies, Lego sets. In my opinion, it's very good. Uh, door houses. Uh, I guess in the end, last resort, video games, right? The other things you can look at is nap time. Um, put your kids to sleep more often, right? Give them some nap time, work during their nap time. And one thing that I personally enjoy that I've tend to be able to resort to more is to wake up earlier. Wake up earlier than the rest of the team to start my day earlier so that I can get some work done at least before the family goes crazy at home. Some of the setups that we've seen is that very important, especially when work from home, you must have a proper desk, right? You must organize workspace so that at least it resembles a working arrangement. Uh, one of the few key things I've realized that really worked for me is that you must have a bigger monitor. You must have try to get the right equipment in place. For me, it's my big monitor screen. I have a noise cancelling headset, right? These are the headsets that I use noise cancelling headset, this especially when you're doing a lot of conference calls. Um, we have Philippine staff working from their homes for the longest time. You know, do you want noise, noise cancelling headset? Because when you're dealing with customers, you have dogs barking at the background, you have kids running in the background. You want to make sure that this does not disturb your uh, communication mm -hmm. with your customers or with your other colleagues too much. So these are worth, very worthwhile investments uh, for yourself. Of, in fact, for your employees, and I think uh, this might be one something that employees have to consider uh, in this kind of situation. Now, the challenge about no face-to-face -face meetings is this, right? According to an UCLA uh, professor uh, speech, what they find is that when you don't have face-to-face -face meetings, you move, lose out about 55% of those non-verbal communication, the, the, body sign, the body language, right? You will not be able to sense whether this customer is really interested to be a customer. You will not be able to determine if the person is really saying a yes, is this really saying a no, or, or certain business decisions somehow is a bit harder to do. And when people just write email, they can be either more rude or they can be you know, more crude or just simply uh, not the real self as you would just meet them face to face. So you lose out more than 50% of these non-verbal cues when you have uh, less face to face, but what can you do about that? So I think that the other two points that we need to be addressed is that is the words are still there, the tone of voice is still there. And one of the few things that we realize everybody should know by now is teleconferencing, which what you're doing now, is a must, right? Invest in a subscription plan with Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Google Hangouts. Some of them are actually free. So you can, this is a definitely a must and it, you will see in a very short time why this is absolutely necessary. Nothing beats having some facial expression on top of your conference calls. And some for us, what we practice in Just Login, which I think is very useful for the, everyone in the audience today, is that we find that you must have at least one touch point a day with your customers, okay? Yeah, sorry, with your employees, one touch day. So for us, every morning at 9 a.m., we will call in to either Zoom on Microsoft Teams, that is for us, and we'll always fix it at the same time, at the same URL link, at the same Zoom link. 15 minutes. 
will call in exactly at nine o'clock sharp, wherever they are on the bus, uh, at home, in another, uh, on the way to work, wherever they are, they will always dial in because there's no excuse. You have a phone with you. You can dial in at that particular time just to share exactly what you're planning to do, what, you, what you're doing, yes, what did you do yesterday, what you're planning to do today. And if you have any issues that you want the rest of the team members to pay attention to at the end of the day. These are all things that we talk about in this 15 minutes. It's very short, just like, what did you do today? What did you plan to do? What did you do yesterday? And what do you want to discuss about later on with my colleague? We set this all up, let everybody have two minutes of their time to talk them through. So you'll get a quick update what your team members are doing. And team will also come in prepared to know exactly what to say during this meeting. So they will think about, hey, what do I need to do today? Right? Okay, I'll have my task list. So we find that this 15 minutes call every day, the team, especially in this kind of setup uh, environment is extremely useful and make sure that you have the powers on the business. You can do this a couple of times a day. Sometimes you can do it tw twice a day, maybe first time a day and last at, at the end of the day, just to make sure that everyone is following through on the task at hand. You'll find that such a setup might even be more efficient than you are when you're in the office because people in the office, you might not be working, but when they have to tell you exactly what you do, they will have to think about it. They have to really do something to show. The other thing that we find about working from home is that you need to arrange calls and meetings in advance. Uh, I cannot emphasize this point. You need to arrange calls because what will happen is that when you start going on this telecommuting uh, practice, you'll find that people will just arrange calls very quickly. You say, oh, half an hour's time. I'll just slot in a call, send you a meeting invite. I'll just call you up. Oh, can we chat now? They use Slack or you know, you can see, can we chat now? Let's get on the call and discuss. That's great in practice, but it's actually very disruptive, especially when you're trying to work from home. Imagine when you're trying to work from home, you might have a very short time to do some deep work. Maybe your kids are sleeping now. You have some deep time, some deep work. And you want to use the time when the house is quiet to do some work that you cannot usually do when the kids are running around. So what you should do is that arrange a time in advance. Give them at least a couple of hours so the person can prepare, can move to a quiet part of the house. Uh, instead of trying to take a call in the middle of, like in the middle of maybe cooking, preparing for dinner and so forth, right? And prepare an agenda so that the person can go into these meetings prepared, 30 minutes, and keep it to 30 minutes block. I rarely see meetings needing to go up to like two, three hours long. So in this, what we'll find that this is some tricks that you can use to make sure that your time when working from home is more productive. And use a scheduling app. For me, I personally use Calendly. Uh, which I'll send people a link. They will choose exactly which of the slots they want from my calendar. I don't need to go email tagging with them, right? They say, when are you available for a call? When are you available for a meeting? I'll just use the Clandy link, send it to the customer. Uh, so if you need to know more information, go to Clandy.com, right? Send it to the customer and they actually can choose from my real-time calendar, from Microsoft or from my Google. And then they'll pre-book those time and slots. And for me, my calendar, it will automatically appear the slot there, which I need to call them or discuss with them. So I would urge you to look at all these tools and think about it, some of the best practice. This is the time where you should instigate some best practice in your meeting arrangement, your, your daily meetings, and so forth. So these are some things that I find has been very, very productive for us. Now, one of the key challenges when it comes to visibility of workforce is that and I like the gentleman, I don't think you can see a workforce, right? So how do you deal with that, the fact that they're not in your office anymore? I think for Just Log In, we have some tools to provide, right? We actually have, I mean, if most of you are actually customers of ours, if not looked at our leave system, maybe it's time to consider. Especially nowadays when the government are implementing things like stay home notice, work from home arrangements, BCP planning, team A versus team B, these things can actually be captured from the leaf system itself, right? So that you have a real-time visibility from the calendar who's at work today, who's supposed to come into work today, and you have a record of that in your system. So when it comes to when government needs to call you guys down for contact tracing, you know exactly where the employees are at which point. Are they on leave? Are they at stay-home notice? Are they for work quarantine? Whichever the case is, you will have a detailed record. You would definitely help the authorities keep track of uh, your employee movement. 
And this is very easy for you to do. You also will be able to do real-time decision-making who should, maybe you're running a small retail store. Here you are, you will have a visibility on how to manage your staff timing. And we have um, Just Leave as well on mobile, right? So on mobile itself, this allows them to be able to keep track of uh, leave movement as well on the mobile device. So there's no excuse really. Think about it. They can apply and cancel leave on the mobile device. They can have a leave summary. So you can also create what they call a custom leave type to capture things like stay home notice, right? This person is supposed to be staying home for 14 days. You can make sure that they apply leave so that you know this, this employee was in leave or stay home for the next, uh, maybe next 14 days, you know exactly which dates. You will have a personal leave calendar to identify who's actually right now on leave, who's on work from home arrangement. This will all be visible on a mobile phone. And the other aspect about it is that time tracking becomes more and more critical because you can't see where all your employees are and whether they're working at a desk. So for us, what we do is that uh, we use a couple of time tracking tools. Um, we, I have looked at Toggle. Toggle is actually a personal time tracking tool that allows you to keep track of what you're working are at which time so that you have a log of uh, time tracking uh, data that you can actually kind of either bill your clients or you can sub in to management to say, hey, during these hours I was working on this and so forth. Well, I personally like as well is Hub Stuff, which we implemented for our remote staff. So all remote staff, as long as you're working from home, they need to use Hub Stuff. Because what happens is that HubStuff is actually keeps track of uh, if they are desk bound, computer based com uh, workers, they will keep track of the activity on the computer as well. And at the end of the day, it gives the manager a summary of the activity level while they're on the computer. I think this is pretty impressive. So for us, we'll be able to, in the end of the day, you can use this to build your customer, you can use this to make a employees accountable for their time. I think this is only fair, especially given the science scenario. When you're working from home, employees have to trust you. But on the other hand, you have to be accountable for your time. So these are the tools that we generally use. And of course, Just Login itself, we have Just Clock. So Just Clock is something that it gives us a real-time visibility of all your employees, right? Where are they working? Uh, where are they working now? It overlays a GPS location. It puts uh, uh, overlay the, the time in and time out on the Google Maps. So you can make sure that your employees are actually working from home or working from office or working for a retail outlet. So, and it comes to this kind of COVID-19 situation where you need to keep track of staff movement. Uh, I think this will give you real time visibility. And you can map it again in roster. And we also map it against an AI engine so that we show that this person is actually the person that clock in in the morning when you clock out. So this is how we do it within even just login itself. We have a mobile app which we clock in and in our we, we have AI face recognition and in our remarks, we actually put in our temperature reading because our management requires us to make sure that we keep our temperature reading every day. So you can actually do a clock in at the same time, type in the temperature reading so your, your company will also have a log of all the temperature reading. We can make this mandatory. So this, in this kind of situation, unfortunately, everyone has to do their part. Uh, and these are some of the things you can implement with our solution. We also can restrict your fencing. So if you have to, let's say, employees can only clock in either from work or from their home, you can actually geofence fence those areas so that they can clock in at those times and they cannot be you know, at a supermarket or uh, maybe the Singapore Zoo, you know, a Universal Studio. <laughs> so these are some of the, 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 the uh, settings we can put in our system to make sure that you know, the employees are responsible, uh, re employees are making uh, kept tracked off if they are actually clocking in from the right places. You can map it against employee roster. So if you have a time-based kind of uh, environment like in retail uh, or maybe in uh, factory settings, you can have a roster just to map against this data as well. So that person, when he clocks in, if they're not clocked in, you will get a notification an alert, this employee has to clock in at this time. So I think given this kind of situation, especially now with COVID-19, you have to consider these uh, options to make sure that 
you have all these bases covered. Now, there are some benefits from working from home. I mean, working from home, after a while, I found that it can, it's quite, uh, uh, if you plan it properly, it can work for you. First of all, it saves at least one or two hours of the employee's time going to and fro work. Now, these are two, two hours that every day that they can either spend on more constructive projects for a company or they can use it to deal with their other matters that they otherwise would have taken leave to do, right? And lunch break is, what I realized also, lunchtime is significantly shorter. I saw our toilet breaks, okay? That's what I found. It's like toilet breaks, you know, you just walk two steps, whereas in an office building, you probably have to take quite a number of steps just to get to a toilet or lunch. Uh, lunch breaks in a, when I'm working at home is only 20, 10 minutes long. Whereas if I work in an office, it's actually two hours long. And there's also less socializing. Since you are very focused on getting things done, you have, otherwise your kids will be running around. You'll find that I don't see the class, uh, my colleagues as much. Uh, I, there's less things to chat about. Let's, let me get to my work. I want to finish my work until deliver my project on time. So these are the key benefits of working from home. And I think employees can look into it and make the best and most out of it. You know, instead of trying to figure out, oh, this is not, I, 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 I cannot work with this kind of setup, embrace it. And this is time to make it a, a possibility and something that works for your company. Some personal tips of mine for staying productive at work is that, especially at home, sorry, is some of the ideas that I have over time practiced. This is really more personal advice and personal something that I thought everyone can look at. You can Google these keywords to find out how they are, what they work. So for me, the first thing is that I like to time box. I like to schedule my time. So even things like uh, if, if a meeting is only 15 minutes long, I'll schedule 15 minutes long. I'll schedule another meeting next follow up so that I have to jump off the call I have to make sure that my meetings are done on time. Especially when you're working from home, you can get to a point where, you know, days, uh, hours pass very, very quickly because you're either more focused or you've got more distraction. So you need to keep those timing as uh, accurate as possible and make sure that you do not overrun. Other things that we look at is like, uh, personally I look at is uh, how do you focus? You can try the Pomodoro method. Okay, Pomodoro Pomodoro method works in such a way whereby it's actually 25 minutes of focus time where you turn off your, your WhatsApp, your phone, focus on 25 minutes, set a timer, and take a five minutes break. And then go drink coffee. Regardless of what you're doing, stop at 25 minutes, go take a five minutes break, come back and restart for another 25 minutes, take a five minutes break, and do it. And keep repeating that process. you find that you'll be more productive. I find that this... Uh, methodology works for me very, very well. Feel free to adopt it. Feel free to research on it. Uh, There's something that I find that during times when uh, there's a lot of distraction, uh, I use the Pomodoro method to keep track, make sure that I do my deep work. Other things to look at is that you can implement things like team days, right? This is something that you can implement at a company level or a personal level. At a company level, you can do things like meetings Monday. So everyone doesn't do any meetings on Monday, they will always just have internal meetings on Monday, scheduled in such a way, or maybe on a Wednesday where no meetings day, everyone can focus on their proper work. So make this as a company policy, especially now that you're on a virtual workforce setup, you, probably these kind of themes are easier to follow through. Meetings, internal meetings are on Monday. External meetings on Friday or something like that, or web conferences are on certain days. So these are the three themes you can implement for your employee to make sure that, you know, it's easier to follow, something that you want to arrange. If you want to arrange for an internal meeting, okay, your uh, meeting day is Wednesday, everybody schedule meetings on those days. And get it true, because there'll be times like this where you, you need certain focus time, you need better time management skills. The other thing that works for me is to schedule my to-dos in my calendar. So if I need to do on a project, I'll schedule it in my calendar so that you know, during that particular hour, I'll make sure that I'm in a place where I can review my emails instead of trying to get answer all the Slack chats and stuff. What happens is that when you start working from home a lot, you find that people, instead of talking to you, they'll be chatting to you all the time. Either through WhatsApp, from Teams, from uh, Slack, there'll be a lot of disruptions coming in. 
and it's very difficult to work when you got this kind of uh, notification coming from different channels. So I'll urge you to consider these times when you do schedule your to dos, turn off everything else, turn off to do, get back to the customer, get back to the person after uh, you've done what you're supposed to do. You find that this is some of the ways you can practice to make sure that you're productive when you're still at home. So thank you for your time today. I hope everyone find that this uh, presentation was simple and easy enough. We're planning a series of talks. So, and I think I'd just like to part with everybody, just keep calm and wash your hands, right? Wash your hands during COVID-19. We have a other series of seminars coming up as well. So if you have, um, we're planning with our, all our partners, if you're interested in any of these topics, feel free to visit our website, justlogin.com slash business continuity. We'll have plenty of series of website as, uh, webinars to help you to uh, look into other areas of HR or other areas that might be um, interesting for you. So feel free to join us for our other webinars, all right, that's upcoming. So check out this website that you see at the bottom. Okay, I'll kind of open up to the floor um, and let me see if I could, I, if I need to answer some questions. Okay, can you set a reminder to input temperature during e clock in? You can, we can this, uh, we can and make sure that when they clock in, uh, they actually cannot clock in without putting their temperature in the remarks. Okay, let me see if there are any questions. Uh, so, can you okay, use for all stuff for on regular work hours? So use uh, for people who need to use rostering, yes, you can use leaf base. We can set it up for you guys. So, I mean, feel free to reach out support. Uh, we have teams to help you on standby to do this. Okay, um, sorry, I wasn't sure this background music. <laughs> okay, so um, any others? If there are no other questions? Hi, Chow, um, you can check the questions on the Q&A button. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I see that on the chat. What if my, okay, so I'll, I'll try to go through some of the questions, all right? Uh, from my mobile lost connection, what if my, okay, so when your mobile loses connection, you say the, uh, we actually save the information on your mobile device, and when it's connected, we'll send it back up again, all right? Set the reminder, I've answered that. How does the automatically works? Do I need to click any button? Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to automatically. Uh, maybe Alex T might want to ask the question, phrase it differently. So how, um, I can help you read out some of the questions from the Q&A. So there's one question from um, Phoebe. So what are your views on developing a work from home guidelines or policy? Um, I generally think that work from home policy, okay, depending on what trade you are, right? So depends on what kind of uh, employees you have. I think the main thing here is what's, uh, what's measured gets done. That's usually a, a philosophy. And for different teams, we tend to have a different policy for each. For example, if our sales team, uh, essentially because we use a CRM like Salesforce, we want to make sure the activity levels are high not only just closing deals, we want to make sure activity levels are high. So we make sure that, you know what, every, every call you make or every email you send out, you actually log it into your CRM so that we can actually use that to measure the activity level. Now, if you have engineers or coders at 
uh, uh, working at home, your philosophy may be, your policy may be, you know what, you're required to use hub stuff, right? For us, we use hub stuff because it captures the screenshots of their desktops as they work. Every five seconds, it'll capture a screenshot of, their, of what they're working. And it also measures the mouse movement and the keyboard movement and so forth. So these are some ideas that you can implement. And when I check out hub stuff, I like it a lot. Uh, we use it a lot for our remote team. Okay, there's another question from CK. Um, he asks, has the stay home notice and work from home leave tags uh, has been set up in just for him? Or how can you set it up? That is just a custom leave type. So you can actually easily implement it. If you need to reach out to support, our support can actually guide you through how to set up your custom leave types. So you, in just login, our leave types, you can set up as many as you like. Because they're quarantine leave type, you can set up stay from home leave type, you can set up uh, stay home notice. So you can differentiate what kind of leave types they are. We have no limit. And that can be also be pumped into time attendance. So they're on a particular leave type, they do not need to clock in. For example, these are some settings you can all do, and I think our support team is on standby to help you guys do that. Okay, um, another anonymous question. So I think there's some miscommunication. He asked, well, How come are we at 30% work from home? What are the challenges of going 100% work from home? So maybe you can clarify that. Uh, so, sorry, your 30% work from home. I don't, I don't quite get the question. How come we're at 30% work from home? Oh, 30% work from home for us was before COVID-19, okay? We already have 30% of our staff. Uh, we were practicing uh, work from home for 30% of our staff back in 2018 till now. That means before COVID-19, before this pandemic was happening. Because we have a remote team, we actually have a team in Philippines. And to do uh, customer support, customer onboarding, but yet, one of the things is that we decided, you know what, takes them two hours to get to work. So we encourage employees there not even to work from home. So our employment agreement with them is actually that they only work from home. So we already have 30% of our staff working from home uh, for last few years. So we are very used to managing an employee base that is working, already working from home. Okay, there's another question. So how can we manage staggered working hours? So for staggered working hours, um, this will be your shift. All right, you can actually set that up in your shift-based setting in our time and attendance module. So these are all within settings. So all your leave modules, just to make sure that the person is, uh, these are all a setting base. Reach out to the support. Our support team can help you do that. Okay. So yeah, one more thing is based on MRN regulation, work from um, stay at home notice can be done from 14 days sick leave. Okay, um, I can't really answer that at this stage because we're still trying to get some clarification, but if based on my understanding, it's quite right. But uh, the regulations are still coming down and we're still getting clarity from MRN. So uh, I think I'm afraid this is probably best to pose it directly to MRN. A lot of these regulations just happened in the last week, so we're still scrambling to figure out what's working and what's not for cutting the regulations. Yeah. Um, by using the shift feature, how did that affect your payroll computation? So when you do the shift fe feature, the computation of the payroll was the it's up to you to set it up. You can base it on hours or you can base it on just work days and so forth. So this is really, depending on your setup, I think this is very particular to your organization. Um, similarly, reach out to our chat. The features are already in our system if you're really a customer. Okay, um, is there any government grants to set up um, JustClock or JustClock in solutions? Yes, there are. There are a couple of grants uh, available, both through us or through our partners. And we are in the process. Uh, I think we please speak to us directly. There are some grants you can register speak to our sales team. Uh, to they will be able to help you on that. Uh, we are covered under PSG, so it's uh, it's it's already available. We've been a grant for a couple of years, really. 
So when it comes to the, the grants, we are also working with the authorities uh, to make sure, like the government, to make sure that you know, these grants can be covered as much as possible, especially these working from home arrangements. So um, you can speak to our sales team. They will have a couple. They will be able to help you with a couple of this. We can also refer you to partners who can give you this guidance. Anything else from anybody else in chat? I think um, there's a few questions that are very, uh, I think, product related. I think you will take these questions and probably uh, respond on a one-to-one -one basis after this webinar. So you can actually write in to support at justlocking.com or info at justlocking.com um, if you want us to get to contact you separately. Okay. I hope this is a, a good session. It's almost 45 minutes. We're pretty much on time. Um, but I mean, we'll be presenting a few more. So the next series of webinars that we will be doing, we'll do it with other partners. So it will just not be me talking. It will be other partners as well. We'll give a different perspective on how to deal with things like performance management, credit, and so forth. So I will urge you to sign them up especially now that you're already all working from home, you might have the time uh, to do that. And I hope you like this webinar series that prepared. Um, so if, uh, if, if, if that's all right, I think for today, I welcome, thank you everyone for participating and I hope to see you next time.